All right, so this is the year of the monitors and it starts with this one, the Asus PG27AQN, a monitor with specs to die for. I'm talking 27 inches, IPS with 360 Hertz and wait for it, best of all, the resolution, 1440p it finally happened so today i'm happy to share my experience with you guys in hopes to help you determine whether you should pick one of these up or not all right first let's talk about this stand which is way too big i immediately threw this on a monitor arm the legs just stick out way too much from the bottom i tried to twist and turn the stand but i could never get it into a good position for me where it was out of the way of my mouse pad and keyboard one thing i do like about the design of this monitor though is the bezels they're nice and slim and they feature a nice anti-glare bezel on the bottom. They've got the gamers covered on the back with that big RGB logo on the back. The menu controls are right on the side, easy to reach. They're textured, which I actually quite like. Now, I'm not gonna go over everything in the menu, but the important things you need to note are the dark boost mode, where you can increase the darkest levels of your image, similar to other competitive monitors. They have a few different modes for color. I currently just use that sRGB mode since I edit content on this monitor. There's also an overdrive setting, which changes the response time from a normal a esports mode and extreme. More on those later, but for now, now, let's take a look at the actual quality of this screen, which is nothing less than exceptional. You're getting the pixel density of 1440p here, so text is gonna look super crispy, content is gonna look really good, it's not gonna be quite 4K, but I think it's really good on these. Whether you wanna watch YouTube videos, movies, animes. By the way, who's watching Chainsaw Man? It, that was a great season, all right? Now, if you did miss it, this is your sign to go and watch it. Now, since this is an IPS monitor, it is an all-in-one monitor, meaning you can color grade, edit videos, and have more real estate. Now, this is something I couldn't stand using 1080p monitors personally, just not enough room on the screen, and I always had to switch back to a 1440p or run a dual monitor. Now, I know some of you might be looking to move up from like a 24 inch or a 25 inch monitor, and what I found moving up, let's say from an XL 2566K from Zowie, is that you have to move your head around a lot more to see your enemies because there's just way more real estate. That's why most competitive players just use a 24 inch monitor or a 25 inch monitor. Everything is right in front of you and there's just less physical fatigue on your neck having to look up, down, right, left, you know what I mean? It's just right there, right? And you can also put the screen closer to you, whereas this one, if you put it closer, you're gonna have to like crank your neck up to see the very edges of the monitor. And I know a lot of people don't wanna do that. One thing Asus did for us though is add in a 25 inch mode which allows the monitor to look like the aspect ratio of 1080p. Now to do this, switch your monitor in your game to 1332p or 1080p in whatever game that you're playing. Essentially after using this mode it's just going to crop in giving you the same field of view but with a sharper image than a normal 1080p monitor would give you. Which is really nice if you think about it, you're getting the best of both worlds here. I absolutely love this feature and it's how I've been running this monitor. I use it with the 1080p in my game and then put it on that 25 inch mode. Although it does have this annoying pop-up that stays up for like 20 minutes every time you all tap. They need to get rid of that. That's one criticism I have of this mode. It's just not necessary. I know that I'm in the 25 inch mode. You don't need to tell me. All right, I saw it the first time. Hopefully they can fix that in future firmware. Now, if you're an artist or do color sensitive work like color grading or editing videos and photos, this features 98% of the DCI-P3 color space and 135% of the sRGB color space. I'm telling you, this monitor does everything. Now there is some backlight bleed on the bottom left and right corners on mine, but there's little to none everywhere else on the monitor, so I'm okay with it. And during everyday gaming, I don't really notice it. Now this panel is also capable of HDR 600. I don't like the look of it. All right, I'm just gonna say that. It just looks like the screen gets slightly brighter. It didn't get that poppy color look to it that I was hoping. This is more of a secondary feature than something that I would use as a selling point for this monitor. So most of the time, I just don't even bother with HDR. Now it does have G-Sync, but screen tearing isn't very noticeable on these higher fresh monitors anymore. I'd much rather them take out that G-Sync, lower the price tag on this. Monitors are so fast now that turning it on almost gives two times the input lag as without. So as you can see, if you're playing a AAA title, 
fine, but if you're playing first person shooters, 100% leave this off. Now this monitor, from the specs you can already tell, is not an easy thing to run. You're gonna need a good system for it, or turn your game down to make it look like Play-Doh. The system I'm running currently is the 5900X and 3090, and I run low settings on Valorant. With this beefy monitor with the resolution and refresh rate, I sometimes dip below 250 frames per second on Valorant, Although I can't go up to 400, I would definitely recommend upgrading your PC before you pick up one of these. Like don't try to just have like a budget PC and try to pick this up and think it's gonna do something for you. You need to upgrade your PC first. If I would say you need at least like a 5800X from the previous generation and like a 3080, 3070 at least to run this. One thing that's really plagued IPS monitors and why I always seem to go back to TN panels like the Zowie monitors with DIAC is the ghosting. Ghosting occurs when a pixel is transitioning from one frame to another and because the monitor's response time isn't fast enough, the last frame still shows a faint image as it disappears, giving you the ghosting. It 100% messes with your eyes in competitive settings. If your monitor is even slower and it takes more than one frame to transition, you're gonna get smearing, which is even worse. So in Valorant, if somebody's peeking around, it can smear as they're moving horizontally across the screen. And it just gives you one of those like, what? what just happened moments, uh, we've all been there. This is on normal mode. I don't use the overdrive on it. Uh, I know there's like the eSports and the extreme, but from the testing and videos that I've seen from Optimal Tech, uh, it didn't give that much of a difference when it came to response time, maybe like 0.1 or two difference. And the amount of ghosting that you started to get and overshoot with it just wasn't worth going up. So I just leave mine on normal. Now I don't have Nvidia's test kit to test the response times on this, but you can tell by the UFO test that this thing is barely ghosting and it is almost on par with the 2566K with Diac Plus. This is just unheard of. There's just very little blur on the edges of the UFO when compared to previous monitors like the Alienware 27 inch 240 Hertz or like that Acer 3090 Hertz IPS this one blows those out of the water and it's only around 0.2 milliseconds off the Zowie a freaking TN panel IPS panels have come a long way this truly feels like a next-gen monitor for these next-gen graphics cards and hopefully games coming out right am I right there's just not been a lot of games that are great recently what's going on just giving this an eye test it's great and for the average person who will just pick up this monitor and start gaming on it it's nice to know that i am recommending something that you will 100 percent be able to see and feel the difference on all right so one con maybe a big con for a lot of people is that this is on the pricey side it's 1000 and $50, but there are no other monitors with these kind of specs offering this kind of performance with these kind of colors on it. It just doesn't happen. And this is something special. Like when I think of next gen, when I think of tech that I'm excited for, this is what I review stuff for, is moments like this, when we get great products that just perform for the price point. And eventually, you know, these are gonna become the standard thing, but for now you gotta pay that like introduction tax on it, the higher price. Now, if you do want something a little more budget friendly, you can go with like a two inch loss or reduction and go with a 24 to 25 inch monitor, 360 Hertz, that'll drop the price about in half, but you're not gonna get anywhere close to the performance that this one is giving you, unless you wanna go TN with the Zowie XL2566K, 66 k which is still the top dog when it comes to first person shooters. But if you're like me and you do more than one thing into your computer, then the PG27AQN gets the highest recommendation from me. Even at the high price point of $1,049, it starts to feel like a bargain. Well, I wouldn't go that far, <laughs> but you guys know what I mean. The performance that you get here is just top notch. The only thing I see coming close to this in terms of value anytime soon are, are like the new 500 Hertz monitors that were just announced or the OLED 240 Hertz monitors, which I'm really excited about as well. For me, and I think a lot of you who kind of are in a similar boat as me, it's gonna take a lot to dethrone this monitor for us. All right, so if you found this video helpful or valuable, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna drop some other relevant content somewhere around here. It has been your boy BT saying peace.